the relationship with your dad was a trigger mm. for panic attacks mm. and anxiety. But your mum had like learning difficulties yeah, before Yeah, when she was then. younger. Um, what's your take on that whole situation? Like, do you, do you, have you bought into that, that theory of something happened with your dad and it triggered something with your mum or just? Yeah, I, I, I believe that did happen. I believe that that was something that I feel like the breakdown of that relationship I think led to her I think it was more of a catalyst because of how she was before do you get what I'm saying whereas if she wasn't that way inclined it might not have been as big of a trigger or as big of a catalyst in regards to like her going through what she went through but I think yeah it definitely played a part in it like it had an effect on like her her whole well-being and her moving forward and I don't know what would have happened if they never, I don't know, broke up or if they never, if their relationship never worked. I don't know whether she would be better or whether she would, whether this was bound to happen, like, just later on in time. But that's life, innit? I mean, I mean, I want to say there's a resentment towards your dad. But if you've, if you've taken that perspective, because it's like the family wanted to take your mum mm. also away from the situation. Mm. And, um, As in you think, like, there'd be bias in regards to, like, that's the blame. Yeah, like yeah. Th 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 you, you must have to harbour potentially some of that energy. Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. As in, as I've grown older though. Because mm. when you're young and all you're being told by parents, you take in as like fact and gospel. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's the truth, that's the truth, that's the truth. Because my auntie said this and my mum said that and my uncle said this. So that's what happened. And as you get older, you're like, wait, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> they said that because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, well, I've gone and spoken to him and. He's giving me his breakdown of the story. And and he's always like, he's always like, leave it to God. Do you know what I mean? But like very like, very like passionate about that. Like God yeah. knows what happened. He said that, what, the, the truth, the truth, the yeah, lies, yeah, yeah. lies or something. Like, yeah. Yeah, truth or truth and lies are lies. At the end of the day, like God knows yeah. what's happened. So just leave it all up to God. And that's like, that's like firm belief. It is. But you know what I was be like, I hear you like whenever someone uses God's name, <laughs> God's word, you'd be like, I can't talk against that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But listen, I'm not God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know. I hate like, when people do that though, man. Yeah. But they use like religion and like God as like a justification for like behavior and actions. Mm. And it's like, you shouldn't be doing that in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Oh, 100%. There was a part also when you, um, you were. When you said like you say like not like a foster parent, mm. was that person actually like a relative or was it just? She was like a family friend, family like, friend who lived like not too far away, yeah. and they were looking for like foster mothers and like carers for like mm. a couple of years because my mum's health was like really bad, and my grandmother couldn't take on that like mm -hmm. duty. Um, so yeah, they just sent me with a family friend who's amazing, and in the documentary like I get to reconnect yeah. with her. Yeah. And the last time I saw her was when I was like a little kid. Just like growing up, like having a parent that's dependent on you it affects your your concept of a childhood for sure i mean how was it in terms for you i then? think what you just said in regards to like growing up quick mm -hmm. it definitely does that like I'm, I'm 27 years old now but i don't feel like i have the mind of a 27 year old like i feel like my mind's like mid 30s at least but i think that's just because i've gone through a lot at a young age that necessarily a lot of people don't have to go through until later on in life like although my grandmother passed away i lost my parents do you get what I mean? Because that was, that was my, that was my idea of parents. Yeah. Like she was my parents. She was mum and dad in one person. Do you get what I mean? So like for somebody to lose both parents at the tender age of 25, it's like a big thing because people don't have to sometimes go through that until they're like proper stabled in their lives with families and kids and they have like they're like children and they're like 50 years old or like 60 years old and then they say goodbye to their parents. Whereas I've lost, like, I feel like I've lost, I've got my mum here, don't get me wrong, but like, I felt like I lost both parents when my grandmother died. So that's like a huge, huge shock to like a young kid. And then I think that moving around different schools, area to area, all of that stuff plays an, a, an effect. But as bad as these things seem, yeah, they're actually all reasons as to why I am the person I am today and why I do what I do for a living, why I love to communicate, why I love to express my emotions, why I love to write poetry, why I love to act, why I love to present, why I love to talk to people, 
because I've been doing this since my childhood and we're all products of what we've been through in our childhood. So for me to go through all of that leads me to have all of these skills now at this age to be like, rah, I'm actually sick at what I do. And that's not because I don't get me wrong. I work hard at what I do, but it's like a natural ability that I've had since I was young that I'll it's carry like, on like In the video, you see it like when you're like, oh, 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 please forgive me, I got it wrong. Like when the camera's on you, you're like, oh, like, if I knew it was on me, I would have made you like, laugh Yeah, 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 I said. <laughs> when I saw that back here, because I didn't see that clip for a time, innit? When I saw that clip back, I was like, rah, this guy literally just wanted to entertain. Yes. That like, he it. just wanted to entertain because I, I think I said, oh, I didn't know you were recording. I would have kept you entertained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meaning, yeah. like, I felt as a duty, I need to keep you entertained to make sure you're having a good time. I think that's where it was. Yeah, right. That's mad, isn't it? That's yeah, so man. mad. It's like, hey, that's me, you know. I was about <laughs> this, like, check my resume. I've been about from young, <laughs> so young, like, yeah. early. Yeah, but that 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 um, and that's when I when I was first asking the question that like when you lost your grandma, like naturally that like, I lost my grandma too. But the impact of me losing my grandma, she lived in Nigeria. I mm. never, she was never my carer. Yeah, provider, might not have been like the same yeah. impact. So I just thought my man, mindset would be like, okay, your grandma. Obviously, because I've seen a documentary, but naturally someone would say like, your grandma's passed, but your mum's still here. Mm. Whereas as you said, like she was mum and dad. Mm. And then even then, how was she? How did that affect your mum then? Because if your mum's yeah, already yeah. In, a, in a somewhat fragile state, yeah, I think it it didn't it wasn't like a, it wasn't a massive massive trigger. Mm. I don't think it was the same way as it was maybe with my when my her relationship with her then husband like mm. deteriorated, but like it affects her man. Mm. Anyone losing a parent like subconsciously like it affects you mm. in ways that sometimes you're not able to like express. Do you know what I mean? What's the family's, um, from your mum's side, what's, the, what's been their uh, reaction? Has it been all positive? Has it still been like... Nah, it's crazy because it's not gone out yet. So no one from my, no one's seen it. No one's seen it. But they, they know it's... Yeah, yeah, they know I went and done it. And they know I went and made it. And they know I've went and wanted to tell this story. Mm -hmm. And it's quite difficult, you know, because coming from a Pakistani household, yeah, there's this like, idea of brushing things under the carpet we don't speak about our issues right. and we don't we don't air out our dirty laundry like we don't need the world to see all the bad stuff that's happening like we put on this front and we show everyone that everything's fine and everything's cool and oh what's going on with you do you know what i mean so like for somebody to turn around and be like yeah i'm making a documentary about my dad and i'm about to air out everything because that's for that's for me that's the way I process. That's the way that I can deal with this thing that's been tackle that I've been tackling with in my mind for so long, put it aside and then move on to like something else. Surprisingly, I didn't get no like negative reaction from anyone. It was more like, yeah, do your thing. And like that's that's a blessing, man. Powerful man. It's yeah. somewhat liberated their minds a little bit. Yeah. Cause you're of age now to actually exactly. you, should, you should be asking these questions. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Where I think if I'd done it any younger, which I was going to do at like 21, 22, I wasn't ready for that, man. And I'm so glad I didn't because doing it now has led to a more, that deeper understanding of the issue at hand and made me understand like what fatherhood like really means, mm -hmm. like in a proper way. Yeah. But, I also think it helps that the fact that you're already on radio, like you're, yeah. you're, you're visible, so you're the same visible person that look we're proud of him mm. he's he's over there mm. so it's almost like this is an extension mm. of the career path that he's already it's media it's entertainment yeah, yeah, yeah. um do you think that if you weren't in that space like in terms of your career but you were still approached to this documentary you may have been a bit more bro i don't think i would be making this documentary if i wasn't inclined to be working in the media industry mm. i think if i was if i had a conventional job i.e. in an office as a lawyer or because that's something i wanted to do when i was younger so if i was doing that for example i don't think i would have even had the ability in my brain to go you know what i can make this into a documentary really understand that side that side come to a objective point of view by getting both sides and form my own opinion for the betterment of myself i wouldn't be able to come up with that because it would have been like alien to me that that could even be an idea and I work in the business of ideas and creating 
And what I want to do now in my career is like really make content that strikes a chord, creates conversation mm -hmm. and can somehow lead to like the betterment of like individuals. That's what I think like the real work of an artist is. And like, that's, that's what they should have all the time in all of their work. So if I weren't doing this and working in how I work and my mind being like very like media orientated, I don't think I would have had the courage to go and do something like this. I would have probably done it like behind the scenes. And I don't think that would have led to like the best answers because everything would have been hidden and uncovered. And for me, I'm very like expressive. Yeah. So it would have, it worked the, it would have worked the opposite way. Yeah. The documentary is amazing, man. It's like, I mean, I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna go to my parents and watch it with them. Serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, serious? Yeah, no, I'm serious. Hey, that's sick. I'm just, I'm on WhatsApp to be like, yo, like, <laughs> with the fam, like, we're watching you, cuz. Do you get what I'm saying? Hey, bro, that's sick, you know. No, because it's we we. I mean, you know, bro. There's a lot of parallels, especially with Nigerians and like, well, let's just say Africans in general. But there's a lot of parallels in terms of like, as you're saying, like, don't ex don't don't expose hmm. what's going on. Bro, we actually are aliens to them because imagine being from here, having all the values you have here, and then you go and live in Russia. Mm. And your kids are now behaving with the values of the Russian youth. You're going to be like, this is like, we, I can't, I don't know any of this that my child is showing. So mm -hmm. I think there's a point now where a lot of the elder generation, like, they're I'm not saying that they're dying out, but it's like literally like, yo, look, man, age is what it is. And it like, you want to connect with us. You have to be understanding how what you have somewhat done mm. has affected us. For sure. and, and it has affected us. 100%. And, and a lot of us are finding out later on, especially relationships. Mm. When, we, when we first met, we spoke about it. Like, but it has an effect and you don't know. Yeah, for sure. You have no idea. 1,000%. Like, like, yo, like, I was, Cadet and I were talking about this yesterday. Uh, shout out to Cadet. And he was like, and he's another very expressive person with what he's for going sure. through, which, as you know, a good friend of yours. And we're just talking about like, his mentality when it comes to like when there's a woman in his life yeah. and why he feels like I'm never good enough for her mm. you know like like she because like because my dad and that's a, like that's a subconscious yeah. thing that's been instilled in his mind through the lacking relationship uh -huh. of him and his father do you get what I mean and we're, we're, we're adults now and it's like yo we really are showing we're showing the um the seeds the seeds the deeds all these things that have been planted within us it's starting to hatch yeah but what is beautiful about what you did is that you went to the root of it. Yeah. As opposed to just being like, I know there's something wrong. I know, I don't know this. I don't know I never met him, but I need to find this out. Yeah. And a lot of people, they don't do that, bro. Bro, because it's hard. It's difficult. It's like, it's hard, bro. What I've done is not easy, bro. Mm. I made it look easy, but you don't see like the, the sleeping on like the floor out in Pakistan with like all these bugs like all over your face. I'm not <laughs> saying like that, 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 that's like a completely different way of like living in comparison to how I have. But what I mean more is like the, like the, the thoughts that come, the emotional side of things, the, is this ever going to happen? I'm a control freak, bro. I love information. I love knowing why things are happening and what's going to happen. I'm that type of person. So to go and be, pushed in a in a in a sphere which you have to give yourself to but then also at the same time be very honest and not know what the answer is is bro it was scary bro like so scary because it's like this could end up so dead and so whack and no one's gonna care and it's gonna just like my story is it's not gonna be one that's worth sharing and then i haven't left with anything that's, you know, you saying that, that's actually just, that's like a major gem because it's like, there were so many different types of pressures. Yeah, proper. You got production companies being mm. like, okay, so we're going to film this day, that day. So you got to be a professional head, yeah? Mm. Working with a production company, like a really good one. Shouts out to Lightbox, they're mm. sick. But, but they're, 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 they're separate yeah. to your emotional. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're like, they this, got is, a job this is do. work for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So they're coming into like, film this person working. This person who's come to work, this is like their, their personal story that, yeah, they're working, but they're also going on this like amazing journey that's going to be hopefully for the betterment of themselves, but not knowing 
what angle, what way it's all going to come. So it was like this balance of like mixing personal and professional in a way that I've never experienced before. Working as a presenter and as a radio broadcaster, you talk about yourself a lot for a living, right? Mm. You talk about your friends, you talk about what you've been up to, you talk about what's been happening, give your opinion on things. But that's like, it's like just there. Yeah. You know, you're, not, you're not coming close. <laughs> like, I'll give you the image of what I think mm. you should have of me. This is literally stripped back every perception layer that people have of you, even you have of yourself, and go, look, boom, I'm here. I'm going to meet my dad. That's it. Vulnerable. But very, like, very. Did you travel rent night? Was it just the production team you were travelling with? Yeah, just one. Uh, we had a director called Lottie, which is one, her and me, just two people. Wow. That's so, it. So what was your emotional support system at that point? I don't know. I, like, had people on, like, phone yeah. and people that I could talk to but I'm I'm weird like that I like to just be left alone sometimes so, so mm. I can process mm. and then when I came back to London I had like my best friend Ali who was there like checking in all the time people around me family like I'm lucky in that sense that I've got a, like a good support base like at mm. home and I think that's imperative for when doing something like this and I don't know whether it's going to help inspire people to maybe do something but I think it's every situation is different isn't it? Like every family situation is different so I feel like you really need to assess whether it is for your benefit or not your benefit and you, you knew it was for your benefit no I just no I didn't know it was going to be for my benefit because I didn't know what the outcome would be I yeah, just knew true. yeah I just knew that like I need to do it like there's this there's something that's taken over me that's going bro you got to do this you have to. You have to action it. It's been. It's there's too many. It's been too much of a thought. It's like the lid just lift, lifted open, and it's like boom, it has to happen. Um, yeah, that feeling is crazy because you can't, you can't vocalize that. You can't. I can't. I can't tell you why. I just tell you that. Like it just happened. Yeah, I mean, documentary is amazing, man. Um, but I think the extension of what I wanted to talk to you about is. You are one of the prominent faces in the Asian community. Um, you're doing well in your career. Um, like what personal targets do you set for yourself now? Because you're now, in, you're now you, have, you're, you have a platform, mm. but platforms can change. Flip things to go left, they can go right. But w what kind of objectives are you now trying to achieve in your career? I think after doing this, it's made me really like, understand like what I was put here to do in comparison to what I thought I was put here to do. Thought I was put here to be famous. Like from a young age, like that's that little young boy in the camera being like, let me entertain you. Whereas now I feel like I have this ability to like connect and like talk and bring stories back that need telling all for the betterment of individuals. Not just for myself, but I feel like I can get things out of people that sometimes other people can't, or sometimes that person can't even get out of themselves. Facts. Because I'm an open book, bro. Like, I'm a, I have no ifs, buts, or maybes for you to be judgmental about me. Mm -hmm. Because, and I feel like this is a shame, what I'm about to say, but I feel like being South Asian and Pakistani, yeah, people have their ideas and their labels around you already. It's like this, or it's like that. Being from South London and into black music, People have their ideas and labels and the way that you talk mm -hmm. about you already. Oh, he's like this, or he's like that. Oh, that's that person. Like, I've put all these labels that I have with South London, black music, Asian, Pakistani, all in one box and been like, okay, that's who he is. Yeah. What I've done is, like, what I'm hoping to do is rip all of that apart and just go, yo, man, I'm just going to look for my dad. It's exactly the same as you, bro. Like, because me and you have way more similarities within each other, mm -hmm. then we do differences. Correct. And that's fact mm -hmm. for the whole human race. And if I can carry on doing things that I feel like are f like for the betterment of human beings in regards to, I don't know, relationships, understanding societies, different cultures, and show that, oh, you know what? I feel that, or like, I rate that. Yeah. Oh, that's happened to me oh, what, that person, oh, that's like, oh, yeah, I, I'm like that. Then that's like, job done. Like, you was put here what you was meant, you, you're doing what you was meant to do. Yeah, you're right, man. Like, the thing you say is so true. Like, we need to have those 
like where we're common, let's just say like we're all one. Yeah. Where we're different, just say that I just lived here. Yeah. yeah. All it is that I just I just lived here and I may yeah, eat, yeah. I may eat this. And I'm my appearance may not be the same as yours, but that's just like genetic. Yeah. But if you're sad, I know being sad. Like if someone's here crying, naturally your human emotion is gonna be like, I may cry too. Mm. Someone yawns, you yawn. It's just you know naturally. what I mean? And that's what I'm saying, like what you, it it I think on a wider context, like I won't say it's humanized what people's perception is of South Asians because some people still are just saying, well, I'm, I'm still going to be ignorant. But it's given a platform where like, this is a thing that everyone goes through. Mm. And actually, the truth of the matter is, this story to me is not a story that I'm, I would have put on the South Asian community. Mm. Do you understand? It's like, it's a, it's a very much nuclear house, grandma, yeah. um, parents, kids all one roof yeah. stay together so this is almost like it's shown like even within that whole dichotomy, there can still be yeah, like know. things that are happening that you might not have thought yeah yeah it's true yeah man it's, so one thing I was going to ask you about um, just also being on how, how long have you been on radio for now I started so oh man so I graduated 21 who did you graduate in journalism. broadcast journalism which uni? Leeds. Oh, Le yeah, you must have heard. Not like that, but like my sister used to go to Leeds. Oh, like Leeds has a big Asian community as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I weren't really, I, weren't, I was at like the proper university. Okay. So I was like immersed with like black, white, Chinese, everyone. Um, yeah, so I graduated from Leeds when I was 21. I used to do like student radio there. That's when I realised that I really wanted to be on the radio. And then I graduated and then I had a show on Represent for like a year and a half, a year, um, doing that. Then I got a show on Asian Network. And I was doing that for two years. And then at the same time as doing Asian Network, I got my weekend breakfast show on One Extra. Um, and I've been doing One Extra for coming up to two years now. Wow. So altogether about three or four years, like within radio. And now like branching out to like TV. Like I've, like this documentary is obviously coming out soon or it might be out by the time that yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it goes out when you've put your magic touch on it yeah. um and then i've got like a tv drama coming out on bbc one or might be out again at the same time uh called informer which I've, I've got like a little couple scenes in where i'm acting and stuff so oh, yeah it's all yeah. it's all happening man you know i i never like to put labels on, on people but bro you're like you, you're the reggie yates of your community <laughs> you, you, you know that, you know like, I laugh at that bro because like I find that so mad bro because I used to watch Reggie when I was younger and be like fam <laughs> this guy's sick like he's actually like I rate him yeah, in regards yeah. to like what he does and how he represents his community like it's, mm -hmm. it's wicked and I always aspire to have like a similar career to him bro like long story short like me and him now we're like he's mad cool he's, like mm -hmm. I look like, he's a mentor. Like, he, I'll shout him with things and he'll be like, yo, cool, hit me up with that, hit me up with this, uh, here's some advice on this and that. And I just find that, I just find that crazy, bro, because it's like, that was once an idea in your mind and then you, you literally worked your reality into that becoming your reality. Mm. Yeah, I've got so much time for him, but he's sick. Yeah, man, and probably like in the next, what, three, four years or five years, maybe there's going to be a, younger mim <laughs> like, yeah, listen i was like in school yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's energy energy yeah, just yeah. It flows and i think and that's taught me that though yeah. that's taught me like really like embracing people and really showing like younger people love in regards mm. to like this is how you do things if you need help with x y and z i can help you with x y and z because there's been loads of people at bbc like charlie like, love. yeah okay, so. like he shot he helped me so much bro like when i was younger just like conversations just that mm. just having conversations that access to information Crisis. is like price that's what that's what we're that's what you that's all you need is that access to information to then go oh man i could do that because if you ain't got no access to information your reality is going to stay the same whereas you've got these little pockets of people coming into your world saying oh yeah i'll do this this is how you do this yeah, yeah, or, i'll do that yeah, yeah, yeah. this is how you do this it can make your world bigger because then you're like, sick. So they done it like that. They done it like that. What is it that you want to do? Okay, I'm going to do it like this, which is wicked. 
She opens your mind to possibilities. Proper. Yeah. Like, now this has been an amazing conversation, man. Like, it's it's crazy because I just I'm still like I'm still in not awe or shock of it, but when I was just watching it, I just I just can't wait. Like, I feel like a little like I've heard an album that's gonna be a classic, and I'm just waiting how everyone else reacts to it. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, yo, like, what's the hashtag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Like, let me go and see what <laughs> what everyone's saying. saying about it. Yeah, yo, yeah it's kind of similar for me as well. Like, I've I've been on this journey for so long, so now I'm really gearing up to like getting it out there and making it touch as many people as it can, and also sharing just that message that is in the whole documentary, which is like. You might not be born with like the best cards and whatnot, but like you can still go and find out stuff that you need to find out for your own betterment yeah. to move forward as a human being. And if it helps anyone with that, sick. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, then I guess they just know me in a different like mm -hmm. light than they might may have done before. Yeah, this is gonna be big for you, though, man. It's gonna be big for you. Like, not even because of what you're saying, but like. It's so transparent, bro. Mm. Like it's, it, it really almost marks not a closing of a chapter, but like you can move forward, bro. For sure, you can move forward, and I feel like I can only move forward once it's out. Yeah, so I mean, like it's still here. Yeah. Like, even doing this interview and talking about it, it's still here. So once like the date comes where it's TX in and it's out. So what's TX in? I'm, I'm sorry, it's a uh, transmission. <laughs> definitely went to uni like I'm thinking like TX what's this like these trainers nah like, bro <laughs> man just proper industry talk to you like that's mad yeah you know we were TX yeah like, yeah remember, you should transmission date meaning yeah. the date it goes out yeah. so when it when that happens then it's like whoa I can breathe man like this is this project is done it's out there it's complete hopefully people like it enjoy it and then move on to the next thing the day it comes out your next opportunity on radio. Do you talk about, will you talk about the documentary at all on radio? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It goes out, yeah, 100%. I, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it and I'll say like, it's out. But because radio is like a, it's a different, different medium. Yeah. So like, I feel like my duty on radio, especially at the time that I'm on, is to like, wake people up. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. gear them up and like, shout them out and like, play songs that they like mm -hmm. and bust some joke so that when they turn the radio on, they're like, oh, they're, I'm having a good time. So to be able to be there and be like, oh, so I've done this like emotional, like yeah, heart wrenching yeah. <laughs> story about me meeting my dad. I don't know if it's the best fit, but I could, I would definitely like. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking. I was thinking like, does it fit radio? Because mm -hmm. you're on radio, mm -hmm. but it's like. Yeah, radio requires like a different part of like me yeah. in comparison to like what documentary requires. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna shout it out. Mm -hmm. Is there ever any like, and, and, I don't, and this is like, I actually don't know. So you could probably speak on it or maybe you may not be able to. But do they have, even though it's the BBC, do they have like targets of what they think what is a successful documentary to be? Like, do they have like numbers behind it? They think like, we I think want... like we live in a day and age now where like numbers, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People gauge success off what has cut through in yeah. regards to like figures. Yeah. Um, and how popular that is. I think for me, what success for, how I would deem this a success is if it's hopefully created conversation. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if it, like I've done, I done the screening in Birmingham and bro, we've done a Q&A &A afterwards and people come up to me after the Q&A &A and like literally poured their heart out. Like, bro, your story is so similar mm -hmm. to mine. I never met my mum. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. Like, do I go and meet her? And I'm like, wow, you've never said, like, you've never said this to anyone before, have you? And they're like, nah. And I'm like, wow, that's powerful. That's, like, so powerful that you're able to now express that. And if it can create conversations like that, I'll be happy. Obviously, I want it to do well. And I want it to cut through. And I want it to be something that people talk yeah. about and see. It's my work. Like, I put my blood, sweat and tears into the whole thing. It's like your album, man. It's like, you, yeah. we're not artists. It's, but like like first, it's your... first album, yeah. literally. But for documentary, it's first album. Yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna top this, boy. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you now see yourself like potentially? Do you think you could move into uh, producing role in terms of like trying to like sell? Because obviously you're in the BBC, so you, uh, one of my friends used to work in. I forgot what the document, the department that deals with all the documentaries and that. And there's a quote of the types of content that they want to mm. put out, right? But do you now see like right, like, I'm now 
I pattern this situation, it's my story, mm. but I now want to use other stories and just usher them through mm. to have a similar impact in different Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Think of this, if there's connection within the story, yeah. full stop. Like, yeah. I want to be involved. And that's what people, that's what successful people do. That's what successful artists are doing now. Like, Jay-Z just went and made the soundtrack. Well, Rock Nation went and made the soundtrack for a series that's coming out on BBC, a drama series that touches on race. And it's called, I've forgotten what the title of it is called, but it, it, it touches on like the black and white race and the, the connotations that come with that yeah. and like the difficulties that come with that. And for him to associate his name on stories like that, it's because he cares. Do you get what I mean? Like there's this underlying theme in an artist's work sometimes where they're like, yo, I want to be able to like help, be that my community, be that people human beings full stop and if I have the ability to do that why not so yeah man 10 years time from now if my name is able to like help and assist projects that I think need to be spoken about and stories that need to be heard like I'm all for it mm. one of my final questions and it's probably going to be like that's totally left foot right but I've just been doing this in general with the man them I don't know if you, if, what your relationship status is at all but um, I said it, I was talking to Dodge Japsy about it, I was talking to T. Janessa about it. Everyone, like, <laughs> well, I don't feel like you're about to like, hit me with a bad left swing. Nah, it's just, it's, it's about like, what's the importance of like, do you feel like it's important to have like a stable relationship? Because this industry is very, mm. it can do, it can, it can trigger different things. Mm. So like, there's this world, and then it's like, there's that world. Mm. But sometimes that world can't be patterned properly because this thing's always going up and down yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I've just looked at this, like, many of the artists I'm like bro like you got a missus or someone they're like nah <laughs> and I'm like bro there's and I'm talking to myself I'm like bro there's levels you know like I'm seeing people getting mad I'm like yeah I'm like, <laughs> I want to right now like, do you get what I'm saying no, I hear you so I, mean, I don't know like for you how do you how does personal life assist you in massively like, yeah. like massively bro like this industry to anyone who's working in it or wants to work in it, like you will be pulled mm. left, right, centre, mm. up, down, diagonal, north east, south east, south, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Your body will be stretched to places that you didn't know they could be stretched <laughs> before. But in a good way, yeah. like as in you're able to do that and do that. All these things that you all wanted to do, you're all able to do. But I think your like personal um, support network in that relationships that you have with like, what I think is key, it's mad because I was thinking about this on the way here and I didn't even know he was going to ask this question, but like, you need like friends who are like there from day, mm -hmm. like day dot, because certain people will start making you question mm -hmm. like what friendship is. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So you actually need to know what friendship is. People from before this thing. Exactly. But way before, yeah, like yeah, way, yeah. way, way before, because that was friendship, do you know what I mean? And then at the same time as that, I would echo the same, the same thing in regards to your relationship, as in having someone there that is like riding for you because you're you, not mm. because you're yeah. Amarud on TV yeah. and you get all these people that you get to speak to and you film all these interviews with all these people and you go to these amazing events, do you get what I mean? So to be able to gauge that is like a real gift. And if you have that ability, you'll be fine. If you don't have that ability, you might mess up. Mm. Then you learn. Mm. And then you'll be able to make better decisions. Yeah, it must be peak for you though, man. Because either way, like, you're a poster boy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I ain't never seen men without a haircut. But what is it? What is it? What is it? Is it like, what, every, what, what, every week? Every, every week, yeah. Every, every, every week. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I have to, bro. Because you're on radio, right? I <laughs> no, no, that sounds bad because no one even sees you when you're on the radio. <laughs> yeah, but people see you going into the radio. Like, yeah, wait. nah, just because, nah, just because this week I just got promo like next week yeah. with like this doc and the drama that I've just been like working on, and yeah, you just kind of have to. You take got to take pride in your appearance. You know what I mean? Yo, didn't you to wait? I, I could be so wrong. Didn't you used to have like this fur coat? Yeah. Okay. I just, I, well, I, how do you know that? Yeah, I remember. But see, I can't remember where I was. 
or where you were, I remember it was like a pimp jacket. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right, bro? Yeah, yeah, I got a blue one and a grey one. Yeah, uh, I definitely got that in my wardrobe still. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't describe it as a pimp jacket. I describe it's a bossy it as... Jo- it's bossy. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to get my diddy on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just let you know that Mims is about... He's, he's about this presentation. Oh, man. my God. All the way, man. I All mean, right, if you're a presenter and you can't present yourself... This is true, man. It's not what you're doing. Lastly, though, um, industry-wise, right... Mm. Um, because I, th- I will echo the whole thing of like, there's people you could be cool with, like, yo, you're over there. But even for me, there's things where it's like, I took her, uh, uh, let me say an associate, and I thought, oh, no, we're friends, we, you know, we talk, we this and that. And then you, you're thinking, oh, we're cool. And then a business decision happens, you're like, yo, friends don't do that. Mm. But then you start learning, no, but that's business. business. And you're like, but I don't know. I know business, but I don't know you'll do that mm, to me. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, big difference. Yeah, like, what lessons have you learned like being in, in the entertainment industry? Man, it's like, you just got to have thick skin, especially if you're an individual that like, I really want to be friends with everyone. <laughs> I think, no, nah, like, that's me. I've always wanted to like, just be friends with everyone. Like, I love everyone. I, I don't see how people could do anything wrong. But then I've been burnt. So it's like, wow, oh, okay. But that's allowed me to then grow. And that's allowed me to like develop a sense of maturity. And then that's allowed me to go, okay, cool. Now I understand how this works. So now I understand how I can be. Do you get what I mean? I'm not saying that, well, because somebody's burnt me, I'm going to burn someone else because of that. But just really assess the situation and know um, why you're doing what you're doing and who you're doing it for. And if you can answer those two, then that's cool. But if you struggle with it, then it might be a bit problematic. Yeah, no, I feel you on that, man. Them words of wisdom there, man. I mean, I was just trying, bro. Like, I needed... There was no one... I didn't have no one. Do you know what I mean? So I started with no one to be able to, like, speak to or whatnot. Um, until I met, like, Aaron and Harry at Jump Off TV. Like, they were my first, like, gateway into working in this, like, industry and whatnot. And then since then, being able to like develop relationships everywhere else and do stuff, like I've come a long way from from that. But I think, yeah, you can literally start off with not knowing no one and just hustling, just going and showing people, I want to do this. Can I do this? Can I do that? Check this out for me. Give me some feedback. Go make this, go do that, go do everything else. And you can literally go and do whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah, man, I'm going to leave it there, man, because that's a powerful word to leave it on, man. But the man they call Mim, you know. Mim. Man, like. Yeah. <laughs> Documentary sick, man. Thank you, bro. Bro, you should be proud of yourself. Thank I know you. you. Do you feel, actually, do you feel proud of yourself? Yeah. That's good. It's, that's beautiful. That Genuinely. You, that you, you can feel that. Yeah. Sometimes people just, they can't associate. Yeah, no, I do, bro. Yourself. Like, genuinely, I'm proud of what I've made, what I've showcased, what hopefully it can do for people. And I just hope it does that. And if you're watching this and you ain't seen it, perfect time to go and watch it now and like see it on iPlayer yep. or check it out on socials hashtag finding dad BBC free and yeah just look out for more of my work